I'm Dr. Karen and I teach with Heart Music and I'm here to tell you a little bit about how to get started with playing your cello. So we have the end pin and we want, the end, we want our cello, we don't want it to be straight up and down. We don't want it to be like really way far away from us like this. We want to find just the right spot for it. Um, and I'll give you a couple of things to look for to make sure your cello is in the right spot. So first of all, my C peg is kind of behind my ear. It tucks in a little bit. You can kind of hear, I can feel it kind of brushing just a little bit against my hair there. I'm not, I, you know, I don't like push back on it like this, but I can feel it kind of gently touching right, right here, right um, in the back of my neck. The bottom of my scroll is not actually touching my shoulder. It's above it by about an inch or so. Uh, so that's something you want to look for. And then the two points of my cello in the lower part, this one in the back and this one in the back, they are not in space. So if, I, if it's like this, I can see that point. My cello is too turned. The other direction too, if I can see this point in the back, my cello is still too turned. So I want to make it so that you can't see either of those two points. They're kind of they're, they're both having just a little bit of contact with my leg. I'm not squeezing it. It's not like riding a horse. You don't have to squeeze your cello. It's just gonna rest gently right there. You'll know it's in the right spot if you can go all the way up and down like this without having to move around. Then you know your cello's at the right angle this way. So I can do that. And also, if I push on my cello in either direction, it's, it, it's not gonna go anywhere because my legs are really what is holding my cello in place. So first of all, um, we're probably not gonna wanna start with the bow as the very first thing, because the bow is kind of tricky. So we're gonna start with just doing some open strings. Uh, first thing is we're gonna think about plucking the strings. That's called pizzicato. It's the, the actual musical term is pizzicato. So when we do that, we want to put our thumb kind of halfway between um, the, this part of the fingerboard and the, this part right here. So it's kind of like right in the middle there. And we like make your fingers into the letter L and you just kind of reach over and you can pluck each of those strings. In case you forgot, the names of our strings are A, D, G, and C. And um, that's just kind of how to get you started. It might be tempting to kind of put your fingers up in the air like this, but you'll actually get a lot better feel for it if you keep your, um, your fingers tucked in in the shape that, of that letter L. Later, when we do have the bow in our hand, that's actually how we hold it. So if you can get your fingers used to being tucked in like this, right from the start, that's excellent. Okay, so um, we can get our, our strings plucking here. We can make a good sound. Um, next thing is to think about where we're going to put each of our fingers. So that my, you can, my cello, I've been playing cello since I was this tall, so I don't have any tapes on mine. Um, it is normal to have tapes on when you start to kind of give you an idea of where to put your fingers. Over time, with lots of practice, you won't need them anymore. And um, so my, you won't see those here, but I use my ears to find the right spot. So let's think about a scale. If I start with my open D string, then the next note is first finger. Then I put my third finger. Two and three are kind of like brother and sister. Every time one goes down, the other one goes down also at first. So we have one, two and three together, then fourth finger. And then I just do that same pattern again on the A string. So there you go. Open one three, four, open, one, three, four, and there's my D major scale. You can actually use that same finger pattern starting on any of your open strings and it will, get, it will be that scale for that string. So if I do G, open, one, three, four, open, one, three, four, and there's my G scale. And then of course with C, open, one, three, that very same finger pattern for all of your open string scales. Let's take a look at how I was actually putting my fingers on the strings. That's important. We don't want to you know, do anything. We don't want to squish them down like this or like 
hold it so tight that you can barely stand it. We want to think about getting our fingers all the way down to the fingerboard without having to squeeze. We don't want to use our thumb really to squeeze those um, that, that are the neck of the cello. So what I do instead is I keep my elbow nice and high and I'm just using the, it's like a falling, like my arm is kind of falling down into the string like this. When I do that, I don't actually even have my thumb like touching the back of the neck at all. It just kind of falls down in there. We're going to get that string all the way down to the fingerboard with nice curved fingers. We don't squish like this. Just my fingers being curved and my elbow being high. My, my arm is plenty heavy to get those strings down all the way without having to squeeze. That will be important later because we don't just stay here. Later you'll learn how to move around up and down on the instrument. So if you can right from the beginning not get in the habit of squeezing your thumb like this, that's definitely a good thing. Step two, uh, you know, once you get comfortable with that, uh, we have to learn how to hold this kind of weird thing here. First of all, when you get your bow, it will probably be loose like this. So see, I've, I've unscrewed this screw at the end of my bow and the hair is kind of just like, like loose. You can see that it's kind of flopping down here. Um, if it's like that, you need to make this a little bit tighter but you don't want to make it too tight. I'll show you how tight we want to do this. The stick should always be curved towards the hair like this. We don't want it to be straight. We don't want to have a parallel line between our, the, the bow hair and the stick. And we definitely don't want to have the bow curved away from the hair. So when it's the right, when I've screwed it in the, the right amount, the bow is still curved down towards the hair, but when I play, the hair doesn't touch the stick. So that's how you know it's in the right spot. You have enough tension on the bow hair to play without hitting the bow stick, but the bow is still curved in down towards the hair. If you put too much tension on it, it's the, the, this hair is kind of springy. So if you put too much tension on it, for a long time, then it's going to lose its springiness and it won't be able to, um, to play very well at all. Um, the way that it makes sound, of course, uh, the hair is a little bit rough. It has some um, sort of a, a bit of a friction to We put rosin on there to make even more friction so that when I rub the bow across the string, it makes the string vibrate and that makes a sound. This is rosin. Um, it is like a, a little bit of a sticky stuff. It's made from, from refined tree sap. And the way that you put that on is just kind of careful. You don't need to do it really fast. You can kind of slowly uh, rub that, rub the hair on that rosin and go up and down just like really three times. You don't really need that much. Um, you, if, you, if you play and you can see just a little bit of white stuff on the strings, um, where you put the rosin on, that's plenty. You don't need to put on so much that it makes like rosin dust fall up everywhere on your instrument. Probably the hardest thing about learning how to hold your bow is learning that you don't have to squeeze it. We're so used to, especially things like this, where you don't want to drop it on the floor. We're used to holding things pretty tightly, but our bow is the opposite. We actually, if your fingers are just in the right spot and your thumb is in the right place, you can just rest your bow on the string with really, really loose, relaxed fingers, and the string will hold up your bow like this. It, if our cello was straight up and down, it would fall, but because our cello is sort of at an angle, you can, you can relax your fingers and that bow won't slide off the string. It takes a little bit of practice, but... Um, it's worth it. Okay, so... Uh, what I do is I put my fingers on the bow like this. If you you can see, I'm I'm gonna make the the hair of the bow point towards you, um, so it's like it's pointing away from me. And I just take my four fingers and I lay them on top like this, so that my fingers are actually kind of like touching the bow. My notice my thumb is just kind of hanging out down here. Some really important things, uh, especially where, see. Can you see where my middle finger has landed? It's sort of halfway on that silver thing and halfway on the edge of the hair. This is the only place 
where you are allowed to touch your bow hair. The rest of it, we want to keep that clean. If your bow hair gets dirty with like finger oils or hand lotion or butter or whatever else you have on your hands, um, it won't actually play. That friction that makes the sound, it won't happen unless we keep the bow hair clean. So this is the only place that you really want to touch your, the bow hair at all. So my middle finger's here, my other fingers are just kind of resting, my thumb is still in space, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll the bow this way so that my fingers have kind of bent. If I do it from the side like this, you can see my fingers are sort of bending as I, as I roll the bow back. My wrist is not doing anything, my wrist is not going up and down, my wrist is staying right there and just my fingers are curling around the bow. Then the last step is to reach your thumb forward like this. Right, so you can see my thumb is curved. I'm not doing a banana thumb like this. I'm not really squeezing it like that. My thumb's just, I just found the right spot for it, which is right here, right in between, right, like right where the, the frog ends and the stick starts. That's the right spot for my thumb. So I kind of just find that right, lay my fingers across, make sure my middle finger is halfway on the silver, halfway in the hair roll that around, reach forward with my thumb, and there you go. Notice I haven't let go with my other hand um, because I don't want to squeeze my bow. If I try to show a, a, a bow hold like this, with, then I have to squeeze my, my hand. If I'm like this with my bow pointed straight up and down, then that works. I can still, my fingers are still loose. I don't have to squeeze it. But the second I do this, my fingers squeeze, and then that's not the right thing. So hold onto it with your other hand, let your fingers feel relaxed, and then you can kind of rest the bow on the string, check, make sure your fingers are still relaxed, and then we're going to start with some nice sh short bows. Just kind of stay down here. Um, it's kind of hard to get all the way to the end because where our elbow over here also has to learn how to straighten out like that when you get towards the end of the bow. We always want to have the letter L or the letter T. We don't want to have the letter X between our bow and the string. We want that to always look like the letter L between our string and the bow or the letter T. So it actually takes a little bit of time to teach your elbow how to do that. So for now, when you're just beginning cello, you can kind of keep things right down here, right in the lower half. That's what we call that. <laughs> went over towards my lower strings, my elbow has to adjust. I can't keep it here and let my wrist come around like this. I have to get, let my elbow come over so that I have the strength to put to, to pull those lower strings down to, towards. It's like if you imagine that you're pulling that string through the fingerboard, I'm not squishing it like this with my thumb. I'm just pulling it using my heavy, heavy arm. And that will help to keep your fingers nice and relaxed and uh, my fingers are still curved all the time. I always want to have that nice curved finger. Uh, the other really important thing, um, since we're all kind of at home right now and we don't have as much contact with our orchestra teachers and our private teachers as we used to, we kind of have to think about how to tune our cello because usually our orchestra teacher can help us with that. But since we're at home now, um, we kind of need to be able to do that all by ourselves. So. We have two things that we use to tune our cello. These are called the tuning pegs, and there's one peg for each of our four strings. Then these down here are called fine tuners. And we again, we have one of each of these. These are screws, and if you screw it in, then you're gonna make the note higher. If you screw it out, then you're gonna make the note lower. So. Um, you can use a tuner, um, some, some uh, smartphones, you can find a lot of free apps on a smartphone or you, um, some, they actually make a little device that helps you that's called a tuner. Um, I, there's probably a website um, that your orchestra teacher can help you find, but we have to, um, we have to first get our strings in tune. Um, I'll show you mine. 
and what the tuner looks like is this. So you can see there's like a little thing that kind of goes back and forth. And when I play my note, that thing that goes back and forth, our goal is to get it straight up in the air. So mine's in tune um, and uh, that's, that's good. Uh, if it were out of tune, I'll show you. I'm going to loosen one of my pegs. So this is the same note, the same string, but it's I've, I've made it purposely out of tune. So what I do is these pegs are kind of shaped like a cone. So as I turn that, I also have to push that in. Otherwise, that cone shape is going to just go right out of my um, out of the spot that it's in. So I'm going to turn that. I'm going to make it tighter. You have to be really gentle and careful. A little goes a long way. We don't want to put so much tension on our strings that they break. Because um, you know, cello strings, they're, it's they're pretty sturdy, but they can break if you if you do too much. So what I do is I get my tuner ready. Uh, I'm going to keep mine over here where um, where I can see it, and I. I pluck it, I look at my tuner, and I say, okay, well, I have to make this go higher. So I'm going to make this tighter. And I'm going to gently push in and turn the tuning peg. It's you, again, you only want to do it a little bit. You have to have, feel, be like, feel like you're pretty strong. Almost there. Okay, I'm close. So now, for the very last little bit, I will um, use my fine tuner. So if you if you kind of see what I'm doing, I bow my I, I bow my string, and I'm looking at my tuner. I know that I need to make it lower, so I'm turning it this way to make it lower. That takes a little bit of practice, but you'll get the hang of it. Until I find the right spot. Okay. So that is, don't be, uh, don't be afraid to try to tune your instrument, but um, just be very gentle, be careful. Don't turn it too much uh, until you start to get the hang of it because um, it uh, you, you can turn it just a little bit and that will make all the difference and it will be in tune like that. Okay, I hope that has given you some good ideas for where to start in learning your cello. And if you have any questions, you can ask your orchestra teacher. You can ask me, I'm Dr. Karen, and enjoy your journey with the cello. Have fun practicing.